Hey there, welcome to the channel. My name's Ben and I'm a graduate structural engineer working in Australia. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the note-taking strategy I used while at university that helped me go from knowing absolutely nothing at the beginning of a course to mastering it come the final exam. This strategy will work for any engineering course you do and doesn't require any fancy apps or study techniques and can be done whether you write your notes in a physical book or digitally on a tablet. The overall goal of the strategy is to get all the information you need to understand the topics you're doing in class into one notebook that you can easily refer back to throughout the semester. And theoretically, if you're able to achieve this goal and get everything you need into this notebook, basically you can rest assured that you're gonna do really well in the course because anything the professors decide to test you on would have been covered in your notebook. And basically the way I found that you can create a really useful notebook throughout the semester is through repeating a four step process. Capture, find the gaps, fill in the gaps and consolidate. Throughout this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do each one of these steps and show you my own notes from university so it becomes super clear. All right, let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing you gotta be doing and it doesn't matter if you've got your lectures online or in person, you need to have the lecture slides downloaded or printed out and ready to write on. And for some reason, if your professor is super old school and doesn't prepare any notes or slides to hand out, just have your pen and paper ready to write down whatever they write on the board. At this stage, as you're writing things down, it doesn't matter if you don't understand what your professor is talking about. It's pretty normal during this stage when you're doing new content for a lot of the information just to go straight over your head, but it doesn't matter as long as you're getting down everything your professor writes on the board into your notebook and you're adding any of the extra verbal tips he's giving you while he's writing it, you're doing really good. Also, I just wanna add, it doesn't matter if your notes are a bit messy and all over the place, as long as you can understand them and you've got them down, that's perfect. Okay, before we jump in and have a look at my notes, I just want to let you know that I use the note-taking app called OneNote. I took my notes digitally. I wrote everything down in OneNote for all my courses, inserted the lecture slides, every tutorial I did, it's all in there. And if you're looking for a good app um, to take your notes, you should definitely think about using OneNote too, because often it's included in your free Microsoft Office 365 apps the university gives you. Quickly before we look at the notes, I just want to let you know that the ones we're going to be looking at here are from my second year Mechanics and Materials 1 class. In this particular lecture, we were learning how to find deflections in beams using the elastic curve and the double integration method. All right, as you can see, I've got all my lecture slides here on the left inserted into OneNote. I'm writing on top of them and I'm also writing off to the side for all the examples. My working out started quite small and neat and I was using a few different colors, but as the tempo started to pick up and the professor started to you know, get carried away, things got a bit hectic. My writing started to get a lot bigger, the colors are now gone. We're doing quite a few examples here you can see in this class too. You should also note that I've got a few of these little rainbow marks over the place of things I want to check back on later. All right, so hopefully by me showing you my notes there, you've got it in your head now that this part can be messy and it's just about getting it all down, but that's all right because this sets you up perfectly for the next step, which is finding the gaps. All right, so essentially in this step, you're going back through your lecture slides and checking that you can understand the content or you're going through your tutorial questions and checking that you know how to solve the problems. In this step, as you're going back through your lecture slides, you'll be using those notes you've now gotten from your professor and making sure that you can understand the content or if you're in a tutorial, you're going back and using those answers you were given from your teacher and making sure that you can solve the problem. As you're going back through your notes, if there's something you don't quite understand, that's totally all right because at this stage, it's just about identifying those things. So if you find something, just add a little asterisk or some other sort of mark that will catch your attention. Also, if by some miracle you understood absolutely everything during the capturing stage because you're some sort of genius or you've covered the concept before, you can skip straight to step four, but otherwise we should be moving on to step three, which is filling in the gaps. All right, so the goal of this step is to figure out those concepts or problems you didn't understand in class and you also didn't understand in your second solo run through. Okay, so one of the first and most straightforward ways you can go about filling in the gaps is by just going up to your professor or your tutor and asking about the concept or tutorial problem you're having an issue with. Just a tip when you're gonna go ask your tutors or professor a question about something you did in a previous class is that you should wait until the end of the class you're going into now because at that point, they've got more time to give you a more clear answer. Okay, so the second way I'd go about filling in the gaps is having a look at the learning material in a lot more detail. The things I'll be looking at in more detail are the lecture slides, the tutorial answer sheet, and also having a read of the textbook. The third and probably the most easiest way you can go about filling in the gaps is just getting online and doing a quick Google search on the thing you're confused about. If there's an exact tutorial problem you're having an issue with, literally just copy and paste it into Google 
And if you're lucky, the exact problem will be there and you'll be able to have a look at the solution and hopefully it'll be explained a different way. In the past, I've literally used so many different websites to understand content I didn't quite get in class. And I've also used video platforms like YouTube and Khan Academy as well. Just for a quick example, I remember when I was first learning about matrix multiplication and I got really confused on the topic. So I just jumped on Google and I typed in how to do matrix multiplication. I landed on Card Academy's website and there was a video there and explained it all. So that really helped me out. Thank you, Khan Academy, for that one. All right, now let's talk about the fourth step, consolidate. In my opinion, this is one of the most important steps because not only will you be creating a note that will help you massively when you go to prepare for your exams, but you're also creating a note that you will refer back to in later years of university when you need to know this information and even after you graduate. Now, the purpose of this step is to get everything you need into one place. By putting everything into one place, it's gonna make everything so much clearer and it's also gonna take the burden off your mind when it comes to remembering where you got all the information from in the first place. I think this consolidates step is particularly useful for tutorial questions. In this step, what I used to do is copy and paste everything from the lecture slides or from online sources that I needed to solve the question and have it all in one neat place where I can refer back to very easily if I needed to. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example now from my final year transportation engineering class. In this particular tutorial, we were learning about the different probability techniques we've got available to model the random nature of queuing. All right, so as you can see, I've got the question up the top here. And as I scroll down, I've got my main working out in black and I've got all the little bits of extra information I need next to it, showing me exactly where to find things and explaining things in terms that I can understand. Also, you can see in these examples that I've written down all the formulas that I need for any of the working out and I've defined all the variables so I don't have to go back to the lecture slides and figure out what they were. Also, something else I really like to do once I made this great note page is to make it stand out. So I would add something special to the title of the note or if you're writing in a notebook, make sure you put like a sticky note or something that'll make it stand out on that page. All right, so there you have it. That was my full note taking process while I was at university. I really hope you took some value away from this video and you incorporate some of these steps into your own study habits. Also, if you're at that part of your university journey where it's time to start applying for internships or graduate engineering roles, I've got two videos for you. In this one here, I talk about the four ways you can land an engineering internship. And in this one here, I talk about exactly how to lay out your resume. Okay, that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.